All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and, and grade this. Uh, all questions are worth three points, except for the matching, which are two points each. I want you to write the balanced formula unit, the total ionic and net ionic, to illustrate the reaction when aqueous solutions of strontium nitrate and sodium sulfate react. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and get our formulas written. So strontium, SR plus 2, nitrate, you guys all remember, is NO3 minus 1. Crisscross, this is SR, NO3, 2, and this is aqueous, okay? I, you have to have labeled this with S or AQ. I need every substance labeled, okay? Sodium sulfate, sodium is Na. It's plus one, sulfate is SO4 minus two. I'm gonna crisscross that. It's Na2, SO4, and that is also aqueous. This is aqueous by the nitrate rule. Nitrate's always aqueous, always soluble. Sodium, this one is soluble by the sodium rule. Now, it is true that most sulfates are soluble, but the overriding rule here is the sodium rule, okay? Sodium is always soluble. All right, these two guys are gonna react. I'm gonna switch these out, so I'm gonna end up with strontium. Strontium is plus two, and a good reason I, rewrote, I wrote these up here so I can say, I can do my crisscross. Strontium's plus two, sulfate minus two. They're gonna crisscross, and I'm gonna end up with strontium sulfate, okay? Now, since I'm here, go ahead and look at your solubility rules. They should be up here. Yes, they should be up here, your solubility rules, and you'll know that strontium is one of our exceptions to sulfate, okay? You should have those down if you don't remember when you're writing your reference sheet. Um, that's probably one of those things you ought to write down. All right, so this is gonna be uh, insoluble, and then I'm gonna make sodium nitrate so I'm actually gonna have two of those, 2A-NO3, and that's gonna be aqueous by two rules. It's gonna be aqueous by the sodium rule and aque uh, aqueous by the nitrate rule. So just be aware of that. Okay, this is my balanced equation. I've got one strontium, one strontium, two nitrates, two nitrates over there. All right, I've got two sodiums and two sodiums over there. And I've got one sulfate and one sulfate over there. So we're all balanced. I need the total ionic or the complete ionic. It depends on just how you write it. This says that everything that's aqueous, everything that's aqueous, I'm going to tear apart. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be strontium. This is plus two. And I want you to go ahead and put aqueous there. Notice again, this is not NO3-2, right? Those two guys, this is two nitrate ions. This is really important. Uh, this is three different pieces stuck together, okay? So I want you to go ahead and put, you're gonna put two nitrates. Give me my charge. Go ahead and tell me that it's aqueous. Same thing here, I've got two sodiums. So I've got two in a plus, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and put aqueous there. And yes, I, I wanna see aqueous. I want to see aqueous, I want to see solid, even in this instance here. Uh, then I've got sulfate, SO4, minus two. I need to see those charges, because that's what you're doing here, is you're representing what's actually happening in water when the water gets a hold and breaks things apart. So this is gonna be aqueous, okay? All right, now, I'm all the way to this part. I've broken everybody apart that's aqueous. This guy is solid. I leave those alone because they're not aqueous. They're going to be solid. So this is SR, SO4. I'll leave my solid state. And then I'm going to break these guys up. So two sodium plus aqueous plus two nitrate uh, aqueous, right? And yeah, I want to see that on all those. Please, please mark that accordingly. Uh, if you're already stressing about your grade, remember this is the one that gets replaced. Don't worry about it gets replaced, all right? Uh, net ionic. So the net ionic is the one 
where I get rid of the aqueous, the guys who are aqueous on both sides, I get rid of the spectators, we call them. And by getting rid of the spectators, we actually get to see the business of the chemistry, what's actually happening. And so the things that are exactly the same, just like we do in algebra, the stuff that's exactly the same, we can get rid of. So nitrate and sodium, sodium and nitrate, those guys are exactly the same. So my net ionic equation is SR plus 2 aqueous plus SR4 minus 2 aqueous yields strontium sulfate as a solid. Okay. Good? Questions? All right. What's the molarity of a solution resulting when 200 milliliters of water is added to 10 milliliters of 6 molar sodium hydroxide? All right. I need you to be really careful here because it is true this is a dilution problem. This is M1V1 equals M2V2. But watch your language here. This says 200 milliliters of water is added to 10 milliliters of the 6 molar solution. So let's go through and mark this. This is definitely V1 and this is definitely M1. This is not V2. V2 is 200 plus 10. So V2 equals 210 milliliters. So let's go ahead and set our equation up. Remember, I want to see you at least fill this in. You don't have to have identified these numbers like I do. You don't have to have written the original equation. I do want to see some work and I want to see those units. Very important. All right. So M1, we said, was 6 molar. V1 was 10 milliliters. V2, or yeah, let's do M2, we'll put M2 there. And that is 210 milliliters. All right. So I'm going to divide both sides, multiply these. So at 60 divided by 210. Let's turn my little calculator on. So 60 divided by 210 equals 0.285. Let's look at my, so this equal, M2 equals 0.2857, blah, 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 some other stuff. I've got three sig figs here, three here, I've got four here, so three is my least. So I'm going to go one, two, three. So this answer should be 0.2857. 2.86 molar, okay. Hopefully everybody understands what's going on there. You have to read the questions. This unit is where we expect you to really be able to, to you know, sort of wrapping it up. How many milliliters of solution results when 5.45 grams of sodium chloride makes a 1.5 molar solution. All right, so this is M equals moles over liters. Now I don't have moles, right? And notice I've asked the question in terms of milliliters. That's just something I'm going to have to watch as I, as after I solve the problem. So what do I know? Well, I do know M so I'm going to go ahead and write M there. I don't have this, so I need to convert grams. So I need the formula. The formula for sodium chloride is NaCl. Anytime I see grams, I'm typically going to need to find the molar mass. So I've got a molar mass. Uh, the molar mass of sodium chloride, uh, let's see. Let's pull out a little hand dandy chart here. That is sodium is 22.99 plus 35.45 so 58.44 grams per mole so I'm going to divide that by 58.44 grams per mole right okay 5.45 divided by 58.44 all right so this is you can leave it in your calculator, that'll help you. 
So 1.5 molar equals point zero nine three moles divided by liters. Hopefully everybody follows what I did. I got the number of moles because that's what has to go here. Now I'm going to solve for liters. It's our next step, so I want to solve for liters. Rewrite our algebra. Okay, so liters equals 0 0.093 moles divided by 1.5 molarity. Now I can rewrite this as moles over liters. Moles cancels, liters flips up. Liters is what I'm looking for. Let's do volume here, volume equals that. Okay. I left it in the calculator. I left this number in the calculator just in case you're a little off because you rounded here at this step. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 1.5 and that gets me volume equals 0 0.062 liters. Now you might think, hey, that's great. Boom, I'm done. No, you're not because the question asked me for milliliters. So I need to convert that into milliliters, divide by 1,000. The actual answer should be V equals 62 milliliters. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, because I have two sig figs there. Everybody okay with that? Good. All right, let's keep going. How many grams of calcium hydroxide can prepare a 1.5 liter of a two molar solution? Okay, so let's again, this is M equals moles over liter. So can I plug this in? Yeah, let's figure out. The first thing I may need to do is solve for moles, and then I'm gonna need to convert that to grams. But let's solve for moles first. I have my, my liters and I have my moles, so let's go ahead and put that in there. Equals moles over 1.5 liters. To solve for moles, I'm gonna multiply both sides. So, so moles equals, they're gonna cancel, this is gonna be one and a half times two is going to be three. So this is going to be, th I need three moles of calcium uh, hydroxide. This is plus two. So I crisscross that. The formula is CaOH2. So I'm going to need three moles of that. Everybody okay? Um, I solved for this. I have three moles of calcium hydroxide right here. That took care of that math, right? So now I need to calculate the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. Again, go back to the periodic table. I'm a little calculator here. So my calculator says calcium is 40.08 plus... 16 times 2 plus 1.008 times 2, okay, 74.096. So I'm going to multiply this by 74.096 grams in one mole, okay, times 3 equals, I need 222. 0.288 grams, okay, of calcium hydroxide. So the calculator says, um, I'm going to say, well, there's only two sig figs here, so I need 220 grams of calcium hydroxide, okay. Don't, just today, no points off from missing sig figs, okay? I know we don't usually do that. Still think about it, but don't, don't count any points off. We've got enough count points counting off already. Y'all, you guys are missing enough stuff. Go ahead and just give yourself full credit if you got that, okay? All right, let's do the next one. 
Um, Susie dissolves 25 grams of sucrose into 500 milliliters uh, uh, water to make solution one. Okay, you got sucrose, make solution one. She then adds 250 milliliters more water to make solution two. Which one is more concentrated? Well, when she added water, she diluted the, the solution. So solution one is going to be more concentrated because she added additional water. So solution one is the one that's more concentrated. Which solution contains the greater number of moles of sucrose? Aha. Uh -huh. What happens when I add more water to a solution that contains a certain number of uh, moles of some solute? What happens to the solute? Yeah, the solute's the same. The solute doesn't change at all. The amount of solute doesn't change. So the number of moles of, of sucrose, the number of moles of sugar, stays the same. All I've done is added more water, so the moles are equal. Which solution would have a lower molarity? Okay, remember, molarity is moles over liters. And the solution that would be, have the lower molarity is the one that would be more dilute. Okay? So that's going to be solution two. How could I increase the molarity? All right, so we've got uh, moles, so we did that. So if I increase the liters on the bottom, solution two is going to have a lower molarity. I increase the denominator. Uh, how could Susie increase the molarity of solution two? Well, if she added additional water, that's going to make it more dilute, right? But if she added additional sugar, that would make it more concentrated. If it's more concentrated, we're going to increase the molarity. All right, let's take a look at our solubility curves real quick. How many grams of, so this is the kind of chart you're going to see on the test, so you need to be aware of that. How many grams of sulfur dioxide are needed to saturate 100 milliliters of water at 40 degrees Celsius? One thing you need to know about sulfur dioxide, guess what? That's a gas. And so I'm looking at this curve right here. Okay, so I'm going to go to 100 milliliters of water. I looked on here, yes, indeed, that's 100 grams. We know the density of water is one, one gram per milliliter, so it's a one to one. So I'm going to go to 40 degrees. I'm going to go up to the line. I'm going to come over. I want to see five, five grams, but if you got six or if you got four, give yourself points for that. I'm okay with that. Um, what is one graft substance that behaves as a gas? Well, there's actually a couple. So you could have written any one of these. So first of all, what I'm looking for are curves that go down because that's what happens. Remember, as I heat up the water, as I heat up the water, the uh, solubility of gas decreases. So I've got SO2, I've got ammonia, and I've got uh, hydrogen chloride. So HCl, SO2, NH3. Any one of those is you're fine. At 20 degrees, uh, what does this say? Actually, look at the paper here. At 20 degrees, 5 grams of potassium chlorate is dissolved in 100 grams of water. Uh, is, this a, is this solution what? All right, so in this, these cases, I want you to find 20 degrees. You're going to have 5 grams. I'm going to put a little mark right there. And look at, this is my potassium chlorate line. So at 20 degrees, 5 grams is under the line. And if it's under the line, it's going to be unsaturated. So that's what I'm looking for there, unsaturated. 
using 200 grams of water, how many grams of potassium nitrate could dissolve at 60 degrees? Well, let's find 60 degrees, and I'm looking for potassium nitrate. So here's potassium nitrate, here's 60 degrees. I'm going to mark that. And you might be tempted to say, oh, 105, because that's about what that looks like. It's about 105 grams, except this is for 100 grams, and I'm asking you for 200 grams. So I need you to double that, and so you should see something like 210. And again, you can cut yourself some slack if, you know, you didn't quite get that. If you did something like a 107, then you would get 214. If you got 103, 206. You know how to read this. You know what the test is going to ask you for. Be honest with yourself as you're grading. If 100 milliliters of 55 degrees uh, Celsius saturated solution of uh, uh, sodium nitrate is cooled to, let's say, 35, 35 degrees, how many grams will not dissolve? So let's take a look here. Um, I'm going to race these things for you. So I've got sodium nitrate. Let's find that line here. There it is way up there. I've got 55 degrees, so I'm right here in the middle, right here. So I'm at 120, okay? And I'm going to cool this down to 35. And at 35, I would have 100, all right? So this is 120 minus 100, so 20 grams. So 20 grams would not dissolve or 20 grams would fall out of solution. All right, let's circle the compounds that are soluble from the following list. The first thing I want to ask is, are these covalent or ionic? If they're covalent, what am I looking for? I'm looking for whether or not they're polar. Okay. So is nitrogen polar? Well, if, first of all, is it covalent or ionic? Nitrogen is covalent. If I were to draw the Lewis dot structure, I would see, let's see, there we go, one, two, three. That's what it looked like. Nitrogen is nonpolar. Copper, hydroxide. Copper two, hydroxide. 